Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again with The Ancient Scholar. And what I'd like to do real quick is I'd like to review and go into a little more detail on, on some of the finer points of uh, neurotransmission, particularly uh, neuromuscular uh, transmission. So if you can imagine that this diagram I've drawn here is the axon of a neuron. This is the uh, terminal axon here. So this is all presynaptic. Okay, I have my synapse right here. I have uh, the muscle. Okay, and I have, of course, the synapse, or in this particular case, we'd call this the in-motor plate or the neuromuscular junction. And in that junction, I have uh, motor nicotinic receptors, okay, which are receptors for the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So the, the general picture that we've talked about already is you have this wave of depolarization that moves down the axon. Of this, obviously, this can be motor, it can be myelinated. We're going to have saltatory conduction um, but you can just imagine sodium coming in, potassium uh, rushing out, and of course the uh, membrane is depolarizing, okay, and then that wave of, of depolarization makes its way into the terminal part of the axon here. And um, this is where I want to spend a little more time talking about what is as what is exactly going on so what's going on is is um even more complicated than i can really talk about today because you actually have the neurotransmitter being manufactured and then it's moving it's actually moved into this area here this kind of this holding area for neurotransmitter molecules and of course you have uh microfilaments um and then you have um uh, Mo uh, protein motor proteins that can move these neurotransmitters into um, position like uh, kinesin is a really important uh, protein when it comes to moving stuff around inside of cells um, but I'm not going to focus on that today so what we have is if if we're okay with the deep wave of depolarization getting to this point okay so that wave of depolarization gets to this point what's going to happen here well, what's going to happen is you have neurotransmitter molecules that are stored in little vesicles, okay? And you have somewhere around, I don't know, 10, 12,000 molecules of acetylcholine per, per vesicle. And these vesicles are just kind of holding out here. And what happens is when this wave of depolarization gets in here, it causes, okay, it causes these vesicles of neurotransmitters to move. And this is what's known as mobilization, okay, or translocation. They translocate or they mobilize and they move toward the active, what we call the active site of the cell membrane of the terminal axon. Okay, and that, that translocation or that mobilization is initiated by the fact that this um, the wave of depolarization gets in and depolarizes this part um, of the axon. Now, if we were to take a look at a vesicle, okay, and this is going to be a really crude way of looking at it, but a vesicle is really just a um, lipid membrane, okay, it is a, a lipid it is a capsule that contains this lipid, okay, this phospholipid membrane. So imagine that I have my little phosphorus heads, all right, and then I have my little lipid tails in the middle, all right, and it creates something like this, a phospholipid membrane that's rolled up on itself into a sphere, and then within that sphere, okay, we have these neurotransmitter molecules. So it, it has a membrane that's very similar to the membrane of the cell. And uh, what happens is once this vesicle gets to the active site, okay, so you, you know, your first step, okay, if, if you want to look at it, this, this, this movement here, and maybe I'll just draw an arrow here. So this, this first step is this translocation, okay, all right. And then the second step, okay, involves docking. So we'll say the second step is docking, all right? So these vesicles here dock, okay, with the cell membrane in the active site of the, um, of the, the terminal axon or the, or, or the distal axon. Um, 
So the question is, how does this dock? Well, what we think goes on is we think that um, as this wave of depolarization moves into here, you have these calcium channels here. And these calcium channels um, are voltage gated, so they sense the change, okay, in the membrane potential. And that change in membrane potential causes them to open. And when they open, they start dumping calcium out in here. And what calcium can do is calcium can interact with um, certain proteins, okay? Um, there is a protein um, in the vesicle because the vesicles are just not only just a, a, a lipid bilayer, but they have just kind of like cell membranes. They have these, you know, proteins embedded in their membranes as well. And one of the proteins is a protein known as synapsin. All right. And that synapsin has a phosphorus group. Okay, a phosphorus group attached to it. And you can think of that phosphorus group as kind of blocking it or preventing it from, from doing what its job is. And then what you have in the active site, okay, here, are you have these little these little microfilaments. Okay, you have these little microfilaments built into the active site, and these contain actin. Okay, the same actin, when we talk about actin and myosin of muscle contraction. And so what happens is, what we think happens is, this calcium enters into the cell, okay? And what it does is it uh, phosphorylates, okay? It actually phosphorylates um, the vesicle, okay? It puts, uh, phosphorylates it, adds a phosphorus on, and then allows this, this protein here, this synapsin, okay? It allows this synapsin to, if you want to think of it as, I don't know, like a hand or something like that, allows the synapsin to attach to the microfilament, all right, the microfilament. And what that does is that allows the vesicle to dock or to kind of attach itself to the cell membrane here, all right? So that's calcium mediated. And then once you have docking, okay, then what will happen is this will fuse, okay, it'll dock to the cell membrane, and then the membrane, and then this membrane will actually fuse into, all right, fuse itself into, so that's step three is this fusion, all right, it'll fuse itself into the membrane, okay, and then once it fuses into the membrane, it kind of, the, the um, vesicle kind of dissolves away, it opens up, and following fusion, um, we have this, this dissolving away and this opening up, and uh, maybe I'll draw another picture over here, okay, where I have the vesicle, okay, fusing the membrane, and following fusion, it dissolves away, gets absorbed, it opens up, releases its neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitter molecules are released and they're dumped out into the synapse here. Okay, and then this is step four. Okay, and this is something known as fission. Fission exo exocytosis. All right, exocytosis. Those. Those, those molecules are released from the neuron, all right? And once they are released, they are dumped out into the synaptic, give me a minute, the synaptic membrane. And once they're dumped out into the synapse, they then attach to the nicotinic receptors Okay, the, the motor, the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, that's what these neurotransmitters are, or acetylcholine. And that causes, okay, a sodium channel, okay, these nicotinic receptors are coupled with sodium channels. That causes these sodium channels to open up. Sodium rushes in to the muscle now. So this is all post, this is postsynaptic, right? So this is the muscle here. Or the myo the myofibrils of the muscle, and that causes 
okay, voltage gated sodium channels to open up, all right, and that causes a depolarization, all right, a depolarization of the muscle, and then that leads ultimately leads to contraction of the muscle. Now, um, I just want to uh, rehash this here. So this, this fusion and this fission exocytosis, we think is also calcium dependent. Um, we're not quite sure exactly what goes into that, um, what, what leads to that, that, um, that post-docking phenomena of the, of the fusion and the exocytosis. Um, but we, we do think that there are some other proteins um, that allow that, 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 that interact, that allow the vesicle to kind of um, dissolve away. Um, but we're not quite sure. We're, we're reasonably sure or we're very, very reasonably sure that it is a calcium mediated process. So calcium is, is not only important in the docking, but it seems to be very important when it comes to fusion and the fission um, exocytosis of the neurotransmitter molecules. And um, there, are, there are some really good research that has been done, particularly with certain types of snake venom, that really do um, suggest that this is the, the proper hypothesis. But what I wanted to do is I just wanted to review this because in the next video, um, I'm going to be talking about how certain types of snake venom can be uh, neurotoxic and having a detailed understanding of what happens here will help us better understand um, the neurotoxicity of specific venoms, particularly when it comes to neurotoxic crotalin venom, um, which are very interesting in the way that they appear to work. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here. As always, have a great day.